We're getting a divorce. Who, which one of us do you girls want to live with? Our eldest daughter, Sally, was the first to respond. I want to live with Dad, she declared. What? My husband was shocked by her words. Our second daughter, Molly, chimed in. Me too? I want to stay with Dad, she affirmed. The twins also expressed their desire to be with their father. Kevin looked like he was turning blue hearing what our daughters were saying. If that's what the kids want, you have the responsibility to take care of them, you know. I reminded him. My name is Sarah, a 45-year-old office worker. I married Kevin when I was 25. Despite numerous arguments and near divorces, we managed to stay together for 20 years, mostly because of our children. We have four kids, our oldest in her senior year of high school, our second daughter a sophomore, and the twins currently in eighth grade. We never expected to have such a large family, but they all get along and Kevin and I are doing well. Now that our daughters are grown, I'm lucky I don't have to worry about them all the time. I can focus on work, especially since we live in a house owned by my grandfather, so there's no rent or loan stress. Watching my children grow up has been the greatest joy. Sally's applying for college, and we support her studies by making midnight snacks. As they've grown older, Kevin and I have found more time for ourselves. Thanks to the kids helping with chores. Kevin's job change has made a significant difference. He's more relaxed, smiling more often, and even suggests going on vacations. He's an amazing husband who cares deeply for our family. This year marks our 20th anniversary, and the children had planned a celebration. However, something unexpected happened before we could celebrate. During one dinner, my second daughter, Molly, seemed rather distant. She didn't respond much, and it was clear she had something on her mind. I figured it might be the onset of puberty, but I decided to check in with her after dinner. Molly, can I talk to you? I asked as gently as I could. Mum, she replied softly. Is something bothering you? You seemed a little off today. I expressed my concern. Yeah, she admitted hesitantly. Whenever you're ready to talk, I'm here to listen. I assured her, preparing to leave her room. But just as I turned to go, she stopped me. Wait, she said, and I paused, closing the door again. Actually, she began, trailing off into an uncomfortable silence. My nerves spiked as I waited for her next words. Then, unexpectedly, she dropped a bombshell. I saw Dad working with a woman I don't know, she confessed. What? I exclaimed, struggling to process the revelation. Um, maybe it was someone from the office, I suggested, trying to rationalize. No, I don't think so. They were working? Closely, Molly clarified. I was speechless. Was my husband having an affair? While we lacked concrete evidence, the intimacy described left little room for doubt. I'm sorry you've had to see that. I apologized, feeling a mix of emotions. Why are you apologizing? You've done nothing wrong, Mom, Molly reassured me. But you must have hated sitting at the table with Dad and eating dinner with them. I realized, feeling a pang of guilt. Well, yeah, she admitted. Thank you for telling me. That was a very brave thing to do. I commended her, grateful for her honesty. I'll look into it, okay? I promised, determined to get to the bottom of things. I couldn't shake the sadness I felt for Molly and the burden she carried. If Kevin was indeed cheating, it was unacceptable. How could he plan a family vacation while betraying our trust? Was it all just an act? In any case, I needed more evidence. So I made the difficult decision to reach out to a private detective. A few weeks passed, and I finally received the results of the investigation. To my dismay, the conclusion was clear. Kevin was indeed having an affair. The shock hit me like a tidal wave. Deep down, I had hoped it wasn't true, but reality crashed down on me. With a heavy heart, I shared the news with Molly. Her reaction mirrored my own disbelief. She had always looked up to Kevin as a father figure, so I could only imagine how devastating this revelation was for her. I can't believe it, Dad, Molly uttered, her voice tinged with disappointment. Mom, you are divorcing him, right? She asked, her eyes searching for confirmation. Yes, 
I replied solemnly, my mind reeling with the weight of the decision. Well, I have to speak to all of the girls to see what they want, Molly insisted, her resolve firm. I can't stand having a dad who cheats on you, Mom. Okay, I'll go and get everybody so we can talk. I agreed, preparing to gather the family for a difficult conversation. It was a Saturday, and the children were all at home. Kevin claimed he had work to attend to, but I couldn't shake the doubt gnawing at me. As I sat down with my daughters and revealed Kevin's betrayal, their reactions mirrored my own shock and disgust. Unbelievable. One of them whispered, capturing the collective sentiment of our shattered family. Sally looks like she could throw up, she says, visibly disturbed. Even the twins, though only in junior high, understand what an affair entails. Do you think I should divorce your dad? I asked them, seeking their input. The children nod in unison, affirming that they'll stay with me after the separation. If that's the case, there's no reason to continue my marriage, I conclude. Deciding to divorce Kevin, I wait until he's home to break the news. Sitting him down on the sofa in our living room, I brace myself for the difficult conversation. I need to talk to you. I begin, but before I can say more, he blurts out something unexpected. I'm sorry. I've been having an affair, he confesses. Huh? What? Are you telling me this? I'm taken aback by his sudden admission. She's pregnant, he adds, dropping another bombshell. Pregnant? I repeat, stunned into silence. I hadn't anticipated him willingly disclosing the affair, let alone the news of a pregnancy. So you want to be with this woman? I ask incredulously, trying to process everything. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sarah. I want a divorce so that I can be with her. You can have custody of the children, he says, his tone apologetic, but his words a mess. Who does he think he is? Does he think he'll be forgiven just because he's allowing me to keep the children? I fume internally. You've got to be kidding me. Do you really think you can be so selfish? I retort, unable to contain my anger. Yeah, but she's pregnant, he argues, as if that justifies everything. You're the ones who weren't being safe. You only have yourselves to blame. I shoot back, feeling a surge of frustration. That has nothing to do with me, he insists, his words cutting deep. How can you say that? I shake my head in disbelief. Anyway, I'm going to be with her, so if you think about it, he declares, starting to pack his bags without a hint of shame. As he leaves, seemingly unfazed by the chaos he's caused, the children storm into the living room, their expressions a mix of anger and disbelief. I can't believe it. What was he thinking, talking about us like that? I express my disbelief to my daughters, seething with anger. I hate him. One of my daughters declares, echoing the sentiment shared by all of them. They are absolutely furious at their father's selfish actions. As they had overheard my intention to divorce Kevin, they were listening when he made his selfish claims. I am beyond angry and amazed at Kevin's audacity. The children start discussing something amongst themselves, and then they make a suggestion to me. Initially surprised, I decide to trust my children and go along with their plan. One week later, Kevin is back temporarily. Are you ready to get divorced now? My girlfriend's pregnant, so I want to marry her as soon as possible, Kevin states plainly. I can only let out a sigh frustrated by his selfishness. Okay, let's get a divorce. I agree tersely. Great, thanks, he responds, handing me the divorce papers. As I glance at them, I bring up the issue of custody. About custody. I'm going to let the girls decide, I continue. Ha! Huh? Kevin appears slightly nervous. Well, they've already made up their minds. They want to be with you anyway, I inform him. They wouldn't want to be with a father who had an affair and got that girl pregnant, would they? Oh, so you do understand that, Kevin acknowledges, his tone defensive. Okay, let's get them to come here, I suggest calling the girls to the living room. We're discussing this now, I announce as they gather around. Well, they already know. They know you had an affair, and they know you got her pregnant, I declare, leaving no room for ambiguity. Kevin looks awkwardly around the room, clearly apprehensive about the children's response. 
When they enter, I pose the question to them. So we're getting a divorce, but which one of us do you girls want to live with? I inquire, hoping for some clarity. Our eldest daughter, Sally, is the first to speak up. I want to live with dad, she announces confidently. What? Kevin is visibly shocked by her words. Our second daughter, Molly, echoes her sentiments. Me too. I want to stay with dad, she asserts. The twins also express their desire to be with their father. Kevin looks like he's about to faint, but he manages to stammer out a question. Wait, wait a second. Why do you all want to come with me? Why do you care? He asks, bewildered. The children don't give a clear answer, but they insistently declare that they want to stay with him. If that's what the kids want, you have the responsibility to take care of them, you know. I remind him, resigned to the situation. Reluctantly, Kevin agrees to take care of our four daughters. Since I own the house we've been living in, he has to move out. When he tells his new wife, Jennifer, about the children, she's furious, but they manage to sort things out and start living in an apartment. After our divorce, both Kevin and Jennifer compensate me for child support. Since Kevin has a stable income, I don't need to pay anything. The children stay with me on weekends but live in the new apartment during the week. It's been about two months since then, and it seems they're adjusting to their new arrangement. However, Kevin and Jennifer's patience seems to wear thin, and they storm into my house one day, visibly upset. Were the girls always like that? They're so selfish, we can't stand it anymore. Kevin exclaims, frustration evident in his voice. Jennifer is equally emotional. How did they end up growing up like that? They complain to me every single day, she laments. Internally, I'm amused by their outburst, but I keep my composure and respond calmly. What are you talking about? They're all very nice girls. They helped around the house when they were living with me. And they never complained about anything. Kevin and Jennifer continue their grievances, citing expenses and the girls' behavior. But I remain firm. That's none of my business. You two have to raise them. I assert, holding my ground, you need to take responsibility. We had to find a place with four bedrooms because of all of them moving in. It's completely over my budget, Kevin complains, shifting the blame onto me. You only have yourself to blame, don't you? And besides, Sally and Molly share a room, and so do the twins. You two are in one room, and then you have a room for the baby, right? The girls wanted a room each, but they're happy to share, so you should be grateful. I counter, frustrated by his lack of accountability. That's not what I'm saying. Whatever, you're the one who had an affair in the first place, and I really can't believe you would have a relationship with a 20-year-old girl. She's only two years older than Sally. Unbelievable. You're the one who betrayed me, so you have no right to say anything to me. Please, can you leave now? I demand, trying to end the conversation. Kevin and Jennifer suddenly start to panic. Wait, please wait. I came here to say I want you to take them back. We can't cope with it any longer, Kevin pleads, realizing they can't handle the children's behavior anymore. Okay, if you say so. I felt sorry for them for having to live with someone as terrible as you to begin with. But you're going to pay child support until all of them come of age. I decree firmly. What? No way. That's going to be so expensive with four girls. Well, they can live with you then. Kevin concedes reluctantly. Okay, okay, I reply, unyielding in my decision. Jennifer is furious at Kevin's acceptance. Wait a second. No, I thought it was just compensation, but in addition to that, we're in this terrible state, and we're going to have to pay child support too? I want a divorce. I'm not going to be poor, she explodes, revealing her true motives. What? Wait a moment. What about a baby? There is no baby. Kevin realizes he's been deceived. I thought if I said I was pregnant, you would get divorced, and I could marry you, and then I would be able to live a wealthy life. Instead, we're heading towards a life of debt. This is unbelievable. Goodbye. I'm never seeing you again. Jennifer storms out, leaving Kevin frozen with shock. I urge him to leave, threatening to call the police if he doesn't comply. He panics and runs out of the house. 
Later, I go through official procedures to reclaim custody of my children and request child support from Kevin. He pays compensation as well as expensive rent, making it tight for him financially. But I am determined to make him pay, and I will never forgive him for his betrayal. His monthly payment becomes a great burden, leaving him struggling to get by. The girls are glad to hear that he's suffering, vowing to make me happy. It's going to be a rough road as a single mother, but I know I can make it through with my wonderful girls. I'll work hard to protect them and ensure they can do what they want to do. It's disgusting to think Kevin had an affair with a girl around the age of his daughter. But I love the way the children stick together, causing trouble for Kevin and his lover. I hope Sarah and her daughters continue to help each other and live as a happy family.